So you might be wondering, well, I can upload and download files, but how do I actually browse the uh, directory or a directory to find out what's inside of it? And obviously that's really important. You need to know uh, what files are actually exist in the user's Dropbox account if you want to pull them down. And this might be useful for if you're creating some kind of application that allows you to manage the files within either the uh, app directory or subdirectory in order to actually list them and download them, upload them, them and keep them in sync. So for that, we have a couple of methods that we can use on the client again. And this is obviously really, really straightforward. So what we're going to do then is we're going to access another method if we head over to client here. And there's a couple of methods we can use get metadata passing in a path, or we can use get metadata with children passing in a path. So let's look at uh, the actual metadata and then we'll look at the metadata with children. So if we were to do a print R, that might make things look a little bit better, on client get metadata, and then we pass in, say, just this directory, so just uh, the code course directory here. And why don't we just put some pre-formatting tags around this or preserving formatting tags around this just so it looks a little bit nicer. So if I refresh now, you will see a list of the, well, this is the metadata for that actual folder. So this is the path. It tells us if it's a directory, it gives us the icon, um, the root and things like that and, and the bytes. So um, at the moment, this is pretty, you know, straightforward because it's just a folder. It's not that interesting. But if we use get metadata with children, you can actually recurse through what's returned from this and find out which files are in there. So this again is pretty straightforward. We have an array with uh, again the the mess data for that for that actual path but then we have contents and that contains another array with keys based on all of the different files and folders that are in there so in this case then we have an array with a uh, revision history id we have whether a thumb exists the path of it which is pretty straightforward um, if it's a directory in this case it's not so we're not gaining anything uh, it'll just be like a false value or something um, we've got the size of it, the MIME type, etc, etc, etc. So, uh, you know, it's just very straightforward. So if, for example, in our um, uh, Sublime text here, we were to uh, just create a new folder, maybe inside of the code course directory, or even create a new file. So I'll just put test here. Um, this is obviously going to sync up to Dropbox. So the next time our application makes a request for the metadata with children on this path, uh, this will update. So if I refresh now, that's now giving me two entries. Uh, the second key now, you can see that the icon is a folder. We know this is a folder. Um, it says is dir one so we know this is. Um, and it gives us information about this as well. So again, if we were to create a file within this test directory, let's maybe call this test.txt and just say hello and then go ahead and refresh again. You'll notice that it doesn't give us that information. So what we would need to do is send a request to this folder if it is a directory and grab the information from that as well. Um, I don't think there's another way to grab uh, a directory with children and then them subfolders children. Uh, it's probably a case of if you were to create, uh, were creating some kind of file browser, you would have to go ahead and have the user click on this directory and then again make another request for uh, the directory with children. Um, but that's pretty straightforward. We now know how we can actually browse the user's uh, direct uh, uh, folder here. And of course, we could change this to test if we wanted to, which would then give us the following result. So that gives us the test path here again with the information. And then it shows that test uh, file inside. So this is all pretty straightforward. We can uh, access what we need from here. And there we go. So that's how we browse users' files from their Dropbox shared folder.